Hello, Rebecca Rosen. Hi, John Holland. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. We're using StreamYard here on Facebook Live, and I am with the lovely medium Rebecca Rosen, and I am John Holland, and we thought we'd come on here and talk a little about, I noticed, Rebecca, uh, you see this topic, and for everyone else, guides are very, he not heavy right now, guides are talked about a lot right now. I see it everywhere. Right. You too? Right. Yeah, I do. I think it's because we're going some, through some very challenging, interesting times, to say the least, and we want to know that we're guided, yeah. and I think people are starting to get curious about what that looks like. Yeah, here comes everybody, Rebecca. Can you see them, Rebecca, on there? I cannot. Under, uh, no. If you hit comments up over on the side, you see private chat and comments? Oh, yeah. See everyone here? Oh, Hi, yeah. Marta, Great. Linda. <laughs> All coming in. Where Love are you guys it. from? I'm really, uh, I really need a reading so bad. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> it's full of a testimony of hope by Dr. Uh, yep, you can get rid of that one, Lara, from that girl with the... Yeah, I don't understand people that come in here. Kimberly James, that ain't gonna happen. Yep, nope, that's okay. All right, hi everyone. John Holland on this beautiful sunny day on the East Coast. And Rebecca, I just saw the news. What are you supposed to get, a little snow? A little, just a little, <laughs> we're, we're yeah. getting a little snow. That's yeah. all right. Yeah. It's the winter. Yeah, you can see the sun, it's coming through my window, like right here. Oh, that's my third eye bl uh, glowing right there, everyone. So um, we wanted to come on here, myself and Rebecca Rosen, and talk a little bit about your team spirit, uh, those that help you on the other side. And if you think about it, everyone, I think people forget sometimes, just as you have people here, teachers and mentors, um, guides and friends that help you here, don't forget you have those on the other side too in the spiritual uh, spiritual realm. Uh, but we, we forget that, Rebecca, don't we sometimes, yes? We do, you know, if you can't see it, sometimes you start to believe that it doesn't exist. But right. as someone I know and anyone who has been following this work, it's just energy, right? And it's this higher frequency of angels and departed loved ones, animals, yeah. that are acting as angels and spirit guides that are surrounding us, you know? And I hear every single day the reminder that we are not alone. We are not expected to navigate our way through this lifetime alone, just like we, we don't in the human world. We need friends. We need counselors and mentors and teachers. Well, we have that team and spirit available to us, but, it, you know, you have to, A, know it exists, and then, B, actively invite it in because of free yeah. will. Absolutely. And uh, we got people from Los Angeles, hey, Brandy, and from Rhode Island, and I see people from uh, all over the world. But okay. let me tell you why. Everywhere. I know, everywhere, uh, which, which I love. Eileen King. Hey, Eileen. Um, Eileen King. Sound familiar, Rebecca? From uh, LA? Hi, Eileen. Yep. yep. <laughs> Actually, Eileen King is the, is the, she was the casting producer. Um, she, she helped find me when, it, way back when, you might be too young, Rebecca, for Unsolved Mysteries. And oh, she is really? the one. Yep, she oh, Eileen okay. King, and we've been in touch ever since. Though, so I met her at Harpo Studios when I went there a long time ago. All right, I believe Oprah's that was great. it. Yeah, um, so, let me tell you. Go ahead, Rebecca. No, um, I was just talking about how everyone's tuned in because I think we're all in the same boat right now. You know, we are trying to figure out how to nav best to navigate our way through the crazy times and to gracefully and easily fulfill what we're here to do, our sole purpose, right? Yeah. And so I think our, our, your, you and I came together. Well, why don't you tell the story how this came yeah. to be? Well, um, Rebecca and I met through the wonderful Gabby Bernstein. And I've known Rebecca, know of Rebecca, know her work. We met once at an I Can Do a conference through Hay House, and that was it. And then Rebecca had a bunch of us together, like a uh, a, a talk uh, that she filmed. And Rebecca called me and asked me, would I like to be part of her podcast? And I said, sure, okay. And she said, I'd like to do a reading. I said, you don't have to do that. I'll be on your podcast. And she said, no, 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 John. She said, it's part of what if something may come out, not private stuff, that's something that we could use or a topic. And so we set up the appointment and she, we did a Zoom call or a Google, I forget what we did. Mm -hmm. And she went right, now she reads differently than, um, than I do. I. Um, people that have passed over, your loved ones. Rebecca went to the next level also. I'm a believer in guides. Um, I don't talk about them too much, but Rebecca does. And she said, John, can, I'm going to start with your guides. And everyone listen to me. Listen to me. 
She told me some things. <laughs> she told me some things that I, when she said it to me, she said, they're telling me this. That, and I went, what? She went right to my heart and soul. All right. And it just touched me. And I really believe if you're going to get a reading and guides are involved. It has to touch you. It can't be general. She went right there. I talked about two most important things in my life, actually two of a lot of important things, but two that she touched on. And then it came in my mother, um, but such wise wisdom. And I just wasn't expecting it because um, I just, I never really had a reading properly where the guides came in and she, um, she didn't say who they were or anything. Okay. But I said, after that reading, I said, Rebecca, so you do a lot with the guides. And we got off the call and I filled her in what, you know, what, what was going on. And I said, we have to, have to do something together. And so that's why we wanted to come on here and talk about guides and angels. And uh, we all have them, everyone. We all have them. And they're not just for transcended masters. Um, you know, we all have guides. Do we all have a guides and angels, Rebecca, with us? Absolutely. Oh, 100%. We all have them. And, you know, like to your point, you don't have to know specifically who they are, but you absolutely can get to know them and develop a relationship with them. Yeah. Um and so, you know, spirit meets you where you're at. So like That's when right. I work with somebody, sometimes I, I stay in dead people land, okay, the astral plane. But I go to the place that your higher self and your guides know that you need. So obviously, John, like you're open and you are more enlightened and aware. And so we went straight to the top. Okay, and so a lot of times the readings I do, it's a combination of dead people and animals, and then we go up to mm -hmm. spirit guides, and then we go up to angels, archangels, ascended masters, mm -hmm. and it really becomes real at that point. And to your point, when somebody gives you a reading, you want it to resonate to the point, it's undeniable evidence that this is real, and that person isn't telling every single person the same generic information, right? Right. Well, the problem with just reading angels and guides is they don't they they do universal truths, not specifics. Like you had spaghetti and meatballs last night, and that was your grandma's famous recipe. I channel the dead people mostly to bring closure, comfort, to know they're still with them and okay, right. but to give evidence that they can relate to and say, "Wow." that really is my grandmother and now i'm trusting and more mm -hmm. open so then when i go to the more universal angels people will be more trusting and accepting of that as well yeah absolutely and you know um you may not even know everyone they're, they're working with you right now and you're thinking well how do what do you mean you know those times when you feel you can't get get out of bed or something's happening you feel like you can't take another step but yet you're finding the strength to do it who do you think is helping you yeah OK, I believe you're getting a little angelic push. I think you're getting a little spiritual help from your spiritual helpers. I believe that your loved ones are also trying to help you also. And you're I don't know if I'm not necessarily saying your loved ones that have passed your mother, father or guides, but they're definitely helpers and they can, uh, you yes. know, they can guide you, push you at the right place at the right time. And Rebecca, how about this? Yeah. Um, and for anyone, have you ever been you, now, you know, your language, you know, you know what you can speak, what your grammar is. Have you ever were talking to someone and then all of a sudden this, the, the most beautiful wisdom comes out of you. And you, I know some of you have, said, have experienced this and you're like, what was that? Right. It's inspiration. And they taught me this in England too. inspiration in spirit, right? Inspiration. And I learned a little about that too. Um, so when you feel like you can't get up, they're, they're right there to help you. Uh, that idea that pops into your head and you're like, oh, that's a good idea. Maybe it wasn't just your mind that gave it to you. Maybe it was a, a spirit helper that gave it um, to you also. This is why I love talking to Rebecca because there's so many on your team spirit, right? Yeah. So many. Oh my gosh. So I my mind went in a thousand places and I guess this is why we're going to do the two plus hour event because there's so many things I want to touch on. But what you said about the roles they play dead loved ones can become spirit guides but they have to be properly trained by higher more advanced beings of light to responsibly right. guide you right because they have to honor our free will they can't interfere they have to know mm -hmm. how much or how little to share but they are always your biggest cheerleaders they are there to like you said inspire you to give you hope to give you signs yeah. okay signs are big yeah. I love yep. the signs. They're like these yep. breadcrumbs on our path to, that give us hope, knowing like, okay, they are watching. And then you feel supported and, and you can move forward. Yeah. And I've had 
I always know when I'm sitting with uh, Rebecca works different. That's what I love working with different mediums. You know, we wouldn't want a carbon copy of ourselves, would we? Right. And I love working with different mediums. But um, I know if I'm doing a reading and I think they're here for they lost someone who has passed away or they did lose someone. Uh, and then there's a shift, at least. And then I say to the person in front of me, you're you're a student of psychic studies or you're a medium. Correct. They're like, yes, I am. Because the guides come in. You see, right. so there are ways for me to go there. That's why I love this woman. Um, you know, you're going to two different things we're going to do on this team spirit. Talk about how to sensitize yourself enough. You have to raise your energy. They lower theirs. And then there's a blending process. Uh, we're going to talk about the responsibility of uh, you because you have your own what they can and can't do. But the the way that my um, I always feel to Rebecca, I think it's good. I think it's great for people to find out who their guides are for themselves sometimes, yes. you know, as being opposed to um, tell by tell by I never say, oh, you have this or this. I can feel an American Indian around people, but I never say this is who your guide is. Some people do, and I'm not putting that down. If you can get it for yourself, everyone, that's how you know. When I was a child, Rebecca, I always used now I'm raised an Italian Catholic in the city of Boston. I was always drawn to um, the colors red and gold. I used to dream of uh, bald headed Asian men, um, you know, with long robes. Wow. And one time for the New Englanders, we have a place called the Boston Commons and it's the Frog Pond. In the Frog Pond area, it's a kids, it's a pool, it's a fountain. We go there, the inner city kids, everyone to take a swim uh, in this little pool. One time my mother took all five of us out, right? And she couldn't find me. Where's little Johnny? Where is he? Where is he? She, there's my there's her other four, but I was missing. So where was I? It wasn't far too far away, over uh, uh, some about a hundred or so feet away where the Hari Krishnas, okay. And you know the Hari Krishnas, Hari Krishna. Oh, yeah. it, oh, yeah. You know they have the you know and they're dressed in the robes here and they're chanting and they're singing Hari Krishna, which means Christ. And I'm rocking with them as a little boy like this. And my mother came, took me by the hand, get away from those people. So I was drawn to Eastern philosophy in Tibet and I've never been there. And I think that's a clue. If you're drawn, if you're not an American Indian, okay? Um, if you weren't uh, American Indian, um, but yet you're drawn to that. If you feel uh, you have a, an affinity with Egypt, yes, it could be past life stuff too though, but it, it could be a clue that's where you were with your guide. I've never been to Tibet, but yet I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated yeah. by Tibetans. And a lot of my stuff is Asian in the house too. And I'm an Irish. Likewise, you, you won't, yeah. yeah. I won't see, you won't see a leaning tower of Pisa right. in my house or something. Okay. Or, or I do have one shamrock, but so I think as a matter of fact, I know I have a Tibetan guide and they don't have to be a priest, a nun, a uh, an American Indian, a Tibetan monk here, um, and we have more than one, and that's why I'm going to love talking about that in the yes. webinar because they all have different roles, also. Yeah. They do, they do, and what you were talking about a lot of times um, is past life memories. It's yeah. a resonance, you know, that yep. energy you're bringing back in to, um, to in some way balance out karmically. Um, yep. But then, like you said, there is there's sometimes it's a guide. And, you know, just today I did a reading for a woman and I said to her, your highest guide is named Lou. She said, I knew it. I always call it Lulu. And I said, the color, because with angels, I get colors, okay, okay. Of, of frequency. And I said, it's a teal greenish blue. She said, Rebecca, right now, I left my house because I have a painter in my bedroom painting my wall teal blue. Yeah. I'm so drawn to that color. <laughs> And yeah. I said, well, your energy is matching that frequency of your angel. Yeah. Yep. And because people go to Hollywood, everyone. So listen, it doesn't, it's not like you're going to see, uh, I'm not going to see a Tibetan monk. It'd be nice if I could uh, step out of a 3D rift. And okay, they can come through with colors, signs, symbols. Um, when I started in England, sitting in circle for the two years, every time a guide group, uh, my guy drew close to me. Um, I felt like a blanket on my shoulders. I was like, oh, they're here. It was just this warmth. But too many of us talk ourselves out of it. So right. I know. Now, I don't need that sign anymore. I know they're here. Um, mm -hmm. And I know when I'm writing, Rebecca, I did. Yeah. I never went to college, but yet I wrote six books. And sometimes it always happens when I'm not focused on the writing. I'll be watching TV or in comes the stream of words. 
-hmm. okay? And I know where they're coming from. So I believe right. I have someone who's help, helping me with my writing, someone to help me with my psychic education. Yes. Um, but, but I have to meet them halfway. With, with, and I said this to Rebecca when we talk about this on our webinar, it's a partnership, everyone, okay? Yeah. You, you have personal responsibility. They're not gonna do everything for you. Yeah, Rebecca? Well, in uh, fact, they can't. I mean, it's, yeah. it's right. like a parent. You have to step back and, you know, responsibly, like, support them and guide them, but then let them pick themselves up, fall, fall down, and figure it out. So our guides are there as the greatest unconditionally loving support system that we could ever have, right? Yeah. But they can't do the work for us. And that's why, you know, when they bring through messages through readings, the information, like if they're doing predictions, it's only a probability. It right. only becomes a reality once you show up, meet the universe halfway and do your part to co-create it, you know, with your team and spirit. So just, uh, when this, yeah, go ahead. No, you go. When this all began for me back when I was really, they're really young, 19 or so, not educated at all in spiritual anything. And I was sitting in a bookstore journaling and that journaling evolved into automatic writing. And so that flow, like you were talking about of, of divine wisdom was channeling through me faster than I could get it onto the paper. Anyways, it was my angel and she said her name was A-Y, A-Y, A-Y. I'm like, I cannot call you A-Y. So I, I said, I'm gonna call you Maya. So M-A-Y-A, -A. so her name is Maya. And so what I've learned is that they don't care what you call them. They don't even have names. They have a frequency. So sometimes right. it's a sound vibration. Sometimes it's a color, like I said. Sometimes they'll say, "Call just call me sunflower because my energy is a goldish yellow color. Mm -hmm. They don't care. As long as your intention is to tune into their frequency for them to work with you. Yeah. And my... Um now, I think another medium gave me uh, the, the Tibetan guide's name in England. Um, and the way it happened, like, here I am saying, okay, it's great if you can get it for yourself. Well, first of all, everyone, I used to dream of uh, Asian men with bald head and gold robes, okay? Um, I'm chanting with the Hare Krishnas. I go to England, and one medium after the other kept saying, you know you have a Tibetan guide with you? And I'm like, God, okay. Then another one said it, and then another one. Then I started to really listen. Because sometimes we're going to teach you, is this me? Is this wishful thinking or is there really a guy? Then I went to Coral Polge, one of the most famous spirit artists in the world. She's now passed away. Um, so she starts drawing. She said, you know, you have a gift, don't you, dear? You know, she was in England. I said, yes. And she starts talking, you know, she's talking and giving me some evidence. And she turns around the picture, which I still have. There's a Tibetan monk. So he made himself presence. He made himself known, basically, Rebecca, from the time I was a child right up to present. So oh, those are signs too, though. You're going to see those signs. It's just being watchful for them. Exactly. And, you know, I think the biggest thing is, is they want to work with you, but they have to honor our call, our request. And That's so, right. you know, once you start to get curious, like if you're tuned into this right now or you join this webinar, they are the ones behind it inspiring you too. And then yeah. you start to open up, meet them halfway, and then magic happens because then all of a sudden they start revealing themselves through the signs and synchronicities. So back when this all began, again, I was very skeptical. I doubted it because I'm thinking, why for the first 20 years of my life did I not have any you know, knowing of this? And now all of a sudden I can talk <laughs> to my grandmother and I right. had handles. So I kept asking them to prove it. And, and I'm way past prove it, game, but I needed that. And I think a lot of people starting out in this journey need enough Evidence, evidence to validate that to alleviate the doubt and so we can teach people which i'm excited we get to do on how to start trusting and to know like you said is it a mind thought or is it a divine thought and there is a very distinct difference and once you figure it out and it does take practice right the more you do this the more skilled you become it's like a muscle the more you work it the stronger it gets and the more you trust the doubt will naturally fall away yeah. Some people might say, well, why do I even need them to help me? Come on, people. All right. We all need a little help. Just like I said in the beginning of this talk here, we all have friends, guides, teachers and mentors here, but you also have them on the other side. All right. And it's like Rebecca said, you have to ask. They're not going to intrude. So, you know, when you're up uh, and who would have thought you have to ask them to, to help you because they're not going to interfere, Rebecca, correct? They're not going to interfere because any responsible guide has been trained to 
just do enough to inspire us forward. But again, it's like having the best personal trainer. Okay, you have to show up at the gym and lift the weights, but they are there to guide you through it so that you don't hurt yourself and so that you make the most of your time and you get to your end goal with the path with the path of least resistance. Yeah. And and so that's what your team does for you. And so life gets a whole lot easier. You you move through life when you co-create with your team and spirit with greater grace and ease and less pain and struggle. Yeah. And and you're going to have, and I said this earlier, you're going to have this thought in your head. Like the other day, I was driving down the street and I heard in my head, you forgot your wallet. Now, is it them? Maybe. Was it just me, my own mind reminding myself? Sometimes there's a difference, like uh, everyone, you can right. feel it, right? And they can put you at the right place at the right time. And you don't have to, um, you don't. I try to think, is this them? Or is this me? Sometimes just go with it, guys, all right? But, you know, and for a lot of you, who you feel like you're alone, you're never alone, Rebecca. I, you are okay. never alone. You might say, I'm the only one here um, out of my family that's left. They're still in part of your family. There's incarnate, you're a spirit. It all started too, Rebecca. When I started doing mediumship, people wanted to um, me to connect to spirits or souls on the other side. And I try to tell them, you're made up of the same magic, the same spirit. There's a spirit incarnate, in your body, the spirit right. discarnate outside your body. And, and there is communication that happens, but Rebecca and I will show you um, how to do that too with it. So what we're doing, everyone, is we're doing, I said, Rebecca, let's do a webinar, okay? For like two, two and a half hours, how people can begin, how to ask, and then build and build and build the different helpers, how to call them in. We'll do a few readings just as a tool to show you how we're getting the information. Um, Got in there's different levels to the spirit world. There's different roles that they play. How do you know which ones to call in? Who's with me? What are the signs? Yeah, this is why we couldn't do it on a 30 minute uh, Facebook Live, but we wanted to come in here. But it all started because this one woman, as I'm pointing at her, oh. uh, she just touched me, guys. Okay. Yeah. And if we can help you get to what she did for me, uh, for yourself, then I feel we're going to have a great, or it's going to be a great one. It's going to be amazing. You know, I've been working with an energy healer for a few years. And she said yeah. to me about two years ago, she said, Rebecca, your guides are saying it's time to start doing more um, talk around higher guides and soul contracts and soul purpose. And all of a sudden, I've had access to this higher realm of understanding the Akashic records, what you signed up for in this lifetime to empower and inspire people. Right. And to remind them that, again, they're not alone. You know, it, even if it's just down to your your beloved pet that passed away, that offered you so much unconditional love and support. And you just need to know that animal is still waiting in the wings there for you. But until then is is available. And it doesn't take someone like you or I to tap into this. We all have a sixth sense, which means nobody's closer to your team and spirit than you are. No, Nobody's more connected to your own intuition than you. Right. Yeah, and so yeah. I, I love this. I love empowering people to start to recognize that they can tap in, they can develop their gifts to whatever degree is right for them. It doesn't mean everybody can do it to the degree you and I do it. You and I were born to do this. It's our purpose. Yeah. For some other people, the same goes for them. But for most people, it, we are meant to use it just like our five physical senses. We are meant to use that sixth sense to help make our life easier and to make choices based in the frequency of love and light and and trust versus, you know, in fear, because that can incur a lot of negative karma, which we sure don't want to bring on. Yeah. And. There is a balance, everyone, too, though. You're a spiritual being and a physical being. Um, we're, we're in, I, I, I'm so glad that we're going to talk about, once again, I'm going to say this, personal responsibility, because I, I've seen sometimes people give all the, re put it all over to the guides, to yeah. the guides. It is a partnership, everyone, yes. okay? It's a 50-50 partnership, all right? Um, but there are certain techniques. There's certain sen how to synthesize uh, yourself to raise your vibration, how to feel them. Um, and, you know, Rebecca knows, and I'm, Rebecca has her expertise in some things. I have mine, but it's a great combination uh, yeah. with the two of us. We both had enough training. And I knew eventually, I mean, don't we even kind of look alike to <laughs> if you think about it, right? Okay. Yeah, it's, long uh, lost brother and sister. Yes, my soul sister. Um, I'm, I just love working with, uh, you know, different people. But I think it was meant to be, Rebecca, because you called me out of the blue and said, would you like to do this podcast? I, I mean, got, I got yeah. a list from my guides on who I was supposed to reach out to. And 
everyone I reached out to was receptive, which tells me it's not me choosing. And right. just like you and I felt this came together naturally. This was like, yeah, okay. let's do this. Yeah. You know, I love what I love about you, John, is you know how to train people and empower people to start to develop their psychic abilities. In fact, just today, someone asked, I got the message, Rebecca, you're supposed to train me um, on how to be a better medium. And I said, actually, you should look at John Holland. <laughs> you have this whole program for this. I'm not doing offering that at this point. So it is a nice collaboration. Well, what I love is I know about guides. I, I you know, but I was spiritually, uh, spiritual from the spiritualist how I was trained. There's, there's, they talk about guides, but not to a full extent, you know, doorkeepers, the, the old spirits used to work that way. But I think that Rebecca and I, we, we, we I think we're going, because we're just beginning to know each other, really, if you think about it, right? Um, when she knew me, when she read me. Life, yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, it's, uh, she's teaching me some new things too, though. It's in here, but maybe, and sometimes, uh, guys, I really believe that people come into your life for a reason. Some stay, some go, some keep coming back, some never leave, right? <laughs> okay. So, but I think that, you know, we, there's relationships that are meant to be. And then that reading she did for me, she started at the highest two things that were very, more important to me. And I, and I didn't even want the read. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't want, I don't, I don't need a reading, Rebecca. But she said some things that distress right from the beginning. I was like, uh, okay, wow, you touched me, Rebecca. So uh, that's, yeah, and I don't get a lot of readings, and I don't, I don't have to know that you know from my mother uh, on the other side. I know she's there, but it, it was special. So she's going to continually teach me, and and hopefully and she learns a little something absolutely. from me also in the way. Yeah, we're always learning. It's a process, you know. And so I was thinking maybe we could leave everybody with just like a tool on how yep. to open the store because it's opened. You know, if you're tuning in. Spirit knows and spirit wants you to continue the conversation directly with them, right? So what would be a tool you would leave them with? I would definitely say, and I know we talked about past lives, but think about your life, everyone, okay? Like I did, and it's different points in your life, okay? Um, with me, with the, the dreaming of the gentleman with robes um, or uh, chanting with the Hare Krishnas or the red and gold in my house. What clues do you feel? You're like, and but I've never studied any of that, everyone. Okay. Um, so what clues in your life? Are there certain colors that you're drawn to that you weren't uh, around when you, I mean, that you liked as a child? Is there, um, is there certain locations that you're drawn to in different parts of the world? When I say uh, Tibet, yes, it could be a reincarnation thing, but I could have been there with my guide. And um, well, I, I think every, a lot of people know this. Angels and guides are different, Rebecca, correct? Yeah. Angels never yeah. incarnated in the physical body, right. all right? Guides right. have walked the earth, all right? And I think we have spent time with our guides. And I think we're going to do it again and again, all right? So mm -hmm. look in your life of different places that you're drawn to, different faiths. You might be Jewish, but yet, Rebecca, you might be Jewish, but yet you're drawn to Buddhism for some right. reason, okay? It could be a guide influence. And stay grounded with it also though. So watch the different places in your life, the different locations and the colors that are in your life um, and see if, if it's, uh, where well, you never trained or been to those places. Those are kind of like little clues. What area are you drawn to, all right? It doesn't always have to be the pyramids. You could be drawn to New Orleans and had something on going, uh, going there too, you know, mm -hmm. going on there. So watch that, Rebecca. Watch where they've been. What, what part of the world are they drawn to also? Because they could have been there with their guide. Right. Absolutely. Yes. And so piggybacking off of that, I think signs are a really easy way to start. So what it starts okay. with an intention followed by an invitation. OK, so your intention is, OK, I want to believe in this. I want some help from above. Show me. <laughs> so you just put it out there. Show me. And so you may sit down in meditation and do this. And then either you designate a sign to them, say, show me cardinals. Or you might say, show me something you will show me in the hours or days ahead to know it's you. And then you might out of the blue see a sunflower in your mind's eye. Or you might, you know, get the chills. Whatever it is, you figure out what that is and then you let it go. And then you move through your life and then synchronistically the cardinal shows up, the sunflower shows up. It may be a real one. It may be you're walking down the street and somebody's wearing a sweatshirt with a big cardinal on it. So it's really about set the intention, invite spirit in, let go, 
And then watch how it's not coincidence because what will happen is you might start saying, yeah, but yeah, but I promise you it is spirit. And the more you do it, the more you invite it in, the more it happens, it starts to become a natural rhythm to your life. And it's pretty magical. Yeah. When she says, watch for it, guys, it doesn't mean look for it. No. Okay. Like if you're Just at the be beach yeah, and I have a sense of humor, if you, if you say, okay, give me a feather. Well, if you're at the beach, you're finding seagull feathers, they're seagull feathers. Exactly. Okay. A rock is a rock, everyone. <laughs> but if a feather shows up on your kitchen table, that wasn't there. Um, or if it's in the kitchen sink, that wasn't there. Uh, yes. If you ask for that. Exactly. Okay. And they're going to do everything that they can and just go through your life. And then when you see it, it's going to resonate with you. You're going to be like, wait a minute. OK, it could be a number. It could be a name. And the same thing with your loved ones that have passed away. They are so, so, so trying to get your attention. But we don't pay attention right. or you could smell your mother's cologne. All right. We're going to talk about it's not just about the guides. We're going to also talk about departed loved ones. Some people um, could be smelling their mom's cologne. And then I feel bad for the, 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 the girl, the little girls or the kids like and the mother says, who's spraying grandma's perfume? It's not us, mom. Right. How do you, we, we explain it away. Yeah. You could feel a warmth on your shoulder when you're thinking about your loved one. All right. And then what you're doing, you're like, oh, it must be the vent. We so explain it away and they're going to keep trying. OK, they're going to keep trying to get your attention. There's a certain signs to the point, Rebecca, where it's so obvious, where it's going to be like this. They might as well put a big sign in front of you. This is your dad. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's true. It's true. Uh, just a 10 second story. I was doing a reading for a woman the other day and I said, your husband kisses you on the back of your neck and she screamed. She's like, literally five seconds before you said that, I felt electricity on the back of my neck and I was thinking right. about you when you said it. And I was teaching her that is real. You're not making that up. Yeah. So they are always trying to desperately get our attention and our only job is to receive it. We don't have to look for it and don't, in fact, don't, like you said, go look for it. Just be open, just yeah. trust and it will find you. And when it does, thank them, offer gratitude. Because that's acknowledgement. It takes a lot of energy for spirit to do this. And we want to honor them. So if we say, thank you, I feel you, I got the sign, bring me more, they will be inspired to keep doing it because it's not a waste of time and energy you're receiving. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's true. And, and they want to know, your loved ones, they're trying to send you a sign too. Well, you guys, can are they getting it? Do they know it's me? And it's, it's what, if I get a sign from my mom, I will be like, ma, I got it. They want to know, did he get that? And someone's talking about here, uh, um, uh, I need validation. Your gift are truly for me. You can get your own Lisa gift for yourself. Um, I need <laughs> validation. Um, I think our work speaks for itself on that note. And someone says, can, can you get rid of the reverb for Rebecca? There's no, I don't hear a reverb at all. There was, I don't hear it, in, but there was, I heard it. Oh, okay. I beg your pardon. Okay. It's spirit um, with us. Yep. Someone's recommended past life, but we're going to, we're going to do all this too in the uh, two and a, and we, so I'm going to walk everybody through a guided meditation um, that was given to me by my guides. And it takes you through every level from the dead people to the animal realm, to everything else up to the archangels and higher ascended masters. So it's pretty amazing. And we're going to show you how you can access this on your own. And really what it comes down to is trust. Yeah. You just got to trust that you can do this. You're not making it up. It's available. No. And we're going to, you know, walk you through what that looks like for you. Yeah, there's so much on here. I mean, it's two. It, uh, I had to make it two and a half hours, uh, not just two hours. But it's uh, March 18th called Team Spirit. That was Rebecca's turn. Uh, learning to connect and communicate with your spirit help us. And there's so much here. It's all charted out what we're going to be doing, recognizing your own spirit first, sitting in the power, raising your energy. Let's meet the guides, the different roles, the tasks. They come in and out of your lives. Why? Uh, explanations of team spirit. There's so much, Rebecca, we're going to do here with them. Uh, first thing you need to do, how to prepare yourself, how to ask what's real, what isn't. And um, it's going to be packed. It's going to be packed. So it's coming up and the date is March 18th and it's from 7 to 930 on the East Coast. We'll put the link right in here, everyone. And we also wanted to make it affordable and not outrageous. So you will see that. So you got you have me, John Holland and the incredible, gorgeous, lovely who's soon to leave Colorado because of the snow, uh, <laughs> Rebecca Rosen. Yeah. So, Rebecca, I'm so looking forward to uh, this you is going to be fun this. and magical. I feel it. It's this meant is to be. Meant to be. Spirit is coming through us to as instruments to help all of these people to empower us, inspire us, and to show us 
how to feel more connected on our own. Yeah. All right. So come join us. And remember, everyone, you the, as we have teachers and mentors and guides here and friends, you also have them over there. It's learning to trust and access and trust what you're getting. And let us help you with that, too, because we all need a little help, especially okay. now. Agree, Rebecca Rosen? Agreed. Okay. All right. <laughs> Laura, thank you for setting this up. Rebecca, um, you have a good, safe yeah. trip. Be careful, and I look forward to this. I will see you on March 18th, Miss Rosen, yeah. okay? You and all the millions of spirits and yes. <laughs> all the people, people. All right, God bless you, darling. Okay. Bye, everyone. Have a Bye. good day, and Bye, do everybody. one kind act. Thank you for joining us.